What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to have a little bit of a look at the Marvel Champions release schedule. If you are watching this, that means my son has just been born. So, I'm not going to be quite as on it as I usually am. So, this seems like a pretty good time to redo the release schedule for Marvel Champions. And if anything changes or any news breaks between me recording this and my son being born... And let's face it, that's almost certainly going to happen. I will, of course, make sure I update it as we go. So, we're in an awkward situation at the moment where things are not necessarily releasing exactly evenly everywhere. So, the last ones that should have been released, we should have seen post-Mad Titan Shadow. We should have seen Nebula, War Machine, The Hood, that's a scenario pack, Valkyrie, and Vision. Those are the ones which should have found their way out. Those are the ones that should be in stores that you should be able to play with. I know not everybody's been able to find all of them, and if that's you, I apologize. Although, just to be clear, it's not, it's not my fault. I'm just showing solidarity because I like you guys. You're watching this. I like you. You're cool people. But the fact of the matter is, it's not always been that easy to find all of them. They're all coming, they're all out there. I've seen some popping up in countries and then running away again. I've seen a whole bunch of stuff, but if they're not out yet and you've not found them yet, hopefully they will be out soon and you will find them soon. But then we've got some stuff which we know is coming, and that is starting off with Sinister Motives. As it stands at the moment, assuming that all the ones that should have been released have been released, Sinister Motives is up next. And I've made absolutely no secret of the fact that Sinister Motives is... I mean, even bearing in mind my ridiculous love of Marvel Champions and how much I play this game and the fact that I buy literally everything, even with all that borne in mind, this is still by a bit of a margin, the most excited I've ever been for Marvel Champions. There is nothing they've done so far which has made me as psyched as this. So it's bringing in a couple of new heroes, as you might expect. It's bringing in Ghost Spider, although let's be clear, she's Spider-Gwen. As far as I'm concerned, we are talking Spider-Gwen, and that's important to me. And you've got a really nice skill where when you resolve an interrupt or responsibility on event, you can ready yourself. And as an action in Alter Ego mode, you can choose to either shuffle Ticket to the Multiverse from your discard pile into your deck, or ready George Stacy. Ticket to the Multiverse being an action that removes it from the game, but then you discard your hand, shuffle your discard pile into your deck, draw up to your hand size, and ready each Ghost Spider card you control. Basically gives you one big turn, and then George Stacy lets you attach an event from your hand face down to it to him and then you get to play events there as if they're in your hand basically you can build up for giant combo turns and that sounds fun you've then got spider-man miles morales and i think we're all pretty excited he's coming along you've got venom blast which is a special that deals two damage to an enemy and stuns them and spider camouflage which gives spider-man a tough status card and confuses the enemy both of which incidentally you know stun and confusion are pretty pretty nuts especially in solo and essentially what you've got then is a bunch of cards that let you activate those skills and then miles morales itself after you change to this form shuffle a spider-man card from your discard pile into your deck which of course means that you're going to be getting well it means you're going to be getting those cards that you want a little bit more easily it's going to be a little bit easier to find them basically you've got two super interesting looking heroes and i am all up for it but then you've got a bunch of super interesting scenarios so we start off with sandman who initially doesn't look that interesting but then we look a bit closer sandman deals indirect damage rather than direct damage when he attacks and if your identity takes any amount of damage, resolve the Surging Sands ability on City Streets, which places a Sand counter here, and discards cards from the top of the encounter deck equal to the number of Sand counters, bearing in mind that when the uh, encounter deck runs out, you get an acceleration token, which is not ideal. So we've got a hero action that lets you exhaust a character to remove Sand counters equal to the character's attack, and you're going to have a lot of back and forth, and that sounds fun. And then obviously there's 
a whole bunch of other cards you can use, or you can use, Sandman can use, to try and, um, well, to try and advance things, and not in a way that you might be terribly happy with. We then move on to Venom, who starts off with a tough status card, and after you attack and damage Venom with a card you control, you place a face-down boost card on your identity, which sounds good. Boost cards are good. That will help you. But leave us alone the main scheme. When Venom activates against you, you move all those face-down boost cards from your identity to Venom, which is less good, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to hurt. So, of course, you need to take Venom out. And how do you do that? Fire and sound. In this case, Bell Tower. If there are at least three chime counters, you flip it. And when any amount of damage would be dealt to Venom by an attack, you can place them as chime counters instead. When Bell Tower goes loud or ringing, you increase all damage Venom takes by one. But if you run out of chime counters, you flip it. And when Venom's attack would deal any amount of damage to an identity, you remove that many chime counters instead and prevent one damage for each chime counter removed. So there's lots going on in terms of trying to make sure you can actually get the right bell tower and hurting Venom. And that's just fun. That is going to be very, very interesting. And I, for one, it, it just sounds fun. All right. It just sounds fun. You then move on to Mysterio. Mysterio is kind of an interesting one. Because as a forced response, after you resolve a boost card during Mysterio's activation, place that card in your discard pile if it's got the illusion trait. Well, why would you do that? Well, the reason is that Maze of Mirrors, the main scheme, when you would draw or discard an encounter card from your deck, deal it to yourself as a face-down encounter card and draw a card. Basically, all those encounter cards that end up in your discard pile at some point are going to end up being drawn or discarded from your deck, at which point they get dealt to you. Mysterious seems like if you don't take them out quickly, you are going to take a lot of encounter cards. And that, that, that's going to hurt, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to hurt. And then we end up with the Sinister Six, an actual Sinister Six scenario which is kind of ridiculous, where you're basically fighting against all six of them. And what you end up with is Sinister Synchronization, the main scheme. Choose a set-aside villain at random, put it into play, and place the active counter on it. When a villain would activate, if no villain is in play, resolve the ambush ability. But you can't win unless you escape from light at the end. Now, it hinders 10, and the players can't win unless they escape. And when the last threat is removed from this scheme, you resolve the ambush ability on the main scheme. Then you flip the card, and once light at the end is flipped, at that point you can actually try and escape and win. It's fun, ladies and gentlemen. It, it's really fun. I love how different and weird all of these scenarios look. And they haven't revealed the fifth scenario officially. We've got Sandman, Venom, Mysterio, and the Sinister Six. I'm not going to tell you what the fifth one is. I believe it's leaked out there, but it's not out there officially, so I'm not going to spoil the surprise. If nothing else, this is actually bringing Silk into Marvel Champions. And yes, it's only as an ally, and I don't even particularly care. If you're bringing in Silk, I am happy. Also, that is one of the covers of the longest run that Silk's had. And that entire run had an amazing artist drawing the covers. So you're telling me I get one of them on a card and you will get a very happy Wossy. Might be my favorite piece of artwork they've used in the whole of Marvel Champions. And I do not say that lightly. So that's the next big one. What's after that? Well, it's two. Because in May, we get Nova. And in May, we get Ironheart. And it is interesting to note that in the Ironheart release article, there was a note right at the bottom. Our hope is to release all future hero packs in pairs. Each will remain their own separate product, barring any shipping delays or other logistical issues. Now, I don't work for Fantasy Flight Games, and this is merely my opinion. But we all know that there have been delays to some of the packs, etc. And it seems like sending out one every month is causing issues, especially with everything that's been going on in the world the last couple years, and shipping two every two months, rather than one every month, is going to be easier for them. 
and it's going to take away a lot of issues. And I'm totally okay with this. That seems fine, but I'm still getting the same number of hero packs. I can always just buy both in May and just play one in May, one in June, and just pretend the second one was released in June. Boom, monthly releases, sorted. Makes no real difference, ladies and gentlemen. And it's just going to be fun. Now, we don't have a release date for Sinister Motives. There is a date on the Asmodee website of the 30th of April, but I rather suspect that is a placeholder date. I wouldn't read too much into that. And it's a Saturday. So it's almost certain, but okay, it's a placeholder date, we'll find out later. So at some point between now and May, we're getting Sinister Motives, and then in May, we're getting Nova and Ironheart. Now, Nova comes along, and you've got Sam Alexander, Alter Ego, lets you spend a resource of any type, search your deck and discard pile for Supernova Helmet, add it to your hand, or put it into play if you pay for this ability using an any type resource. And Nova Helmet, of course, is, you know, it's Nova. You need Nova Helmet. Or Supernova Helmet. Gives you Aerial and lets you exhaust Supernova Helmet to gain an any type resource. And that sounds pretty good to me. That's going to help you, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to help you. We've then got Nova. After you use one of Nova's basic powers, you ready Supernova Helmet. And that means you're going to be able to use that to gain another resource. And that's essentially what Nova does. You gain a whole bunch of extra resources and you play around with any type resources. And there are a bunch of cards that really, well, depend on you using these any type resources. So, for instance, we could take a little bit of a look at Potshot. Double the number of any type resources generated while paying for this card. So it's, it's a one cost card that deals four damage rather than two. As a little bit of an example. This one again, and I know I'm excited about all of this stuff and I'm not even going to apologize about it. It just looks fun. But one new thing they're doing with Nova is they are introducing a new encounter set. This time featuring Armadillo. So it's a modular encounter set. And essentially, you can put it in with whatever villain you're playing, or you can't. Essentially, any time you're playing any villain, this is a new encounter set you can pop in if you wish, or you could ignore it forever. And I adore this, because when I get a new hero, I'm playing with the new hero, but obviously there's only so many villains. Now, basically every time I play Nova, I'm going to whack Armadillo in with whatever enemy I'm facing, and now I've got an extra new thing I get to play with. And I absolutely adore this. I think it's wonderful. And if Fantasy Flight Games could keep taking obscure, proper, you know, low-tier villains. And I don't say that as an insult. And popping them in as encounter sets. I would be delighted. Give me Iguana. And then the last one we've got confirmed at the moment is Ironheart, who's coming in May. There are rumours out there, but we're just going through the confirmed releases at the moment. And Ironheart looks so good. And I know I keep saying they all look so good. I'm sorry, they do. Because Ironheart, what we've basically got here is three different hero forms that you essentially evolve up through as you go through the game. So Riri Williams Stage 1, you can spend a uh, science resource, place a progress counter on Riri Williams, and when you get six progress counters on version 1, you're ready her, and swap with version 2. And then so on and so forth. You build it up as you go through the game, and you end up with a really, really powerful Stage 3 or version 3. 3 thwart, 2 attack, 3 defense is huge. And then you get to remove a progress counter to deal two damage to an enemy. And that does not say that you have to exhaust Ironheart or it's limited to once per phase. So I don't see where any kind of limit comes in here. And that just means that when you get up to version 3, which you've got to think is something you're going to be trying to do as fast as humanly possible, that is going to give you a huge, huge advantage. And yes, just like with Nova, we do get ourselves... An extra encounter modular set here featuring Zax, who is another weird, obscure Marvel villain that is an encounter set you can pop in with any, any encounter you like, any villain you like. And I love it. I think this is absolutely brilliant. I am a huge fan of it. 
So to confirm, there are only actually three sets at the moment which have been officially revealed, which we don't have. That is Sinister Motives, the big Spider-Man set, which features all that good stuff. And then we've got Nova and Ironheart. Incidentally, none of them are web warriors. I mean, I know there's crossover with both those characters have crossed over with the Spider-Man, but that's not the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. So that's a little bit weird. Hopefully we will get some more of these in the future. And I'm just putting it out there. Please give me a Silk Hero pack. I know she's not as well known as Spider-Gwen and I don't care. Just give me a Silk Hero pack, would you? Thank you very much. For now, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we know, so I want to hear from you guys. Which of these are you excited about? Which do you think look the best? Which are you going to be picking up? Or are you going to do a wussy and just buy them all? Let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Marvel Champions and a whole bunch of other games, card games, video games, whatever we like, really. And do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far, the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.